Israel's holding its fifth national election today, in less than four years. The election could result in former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu returning to power, even though he's currently on trial for corruption. The election comes at a time of an increasingly deadly Israeli crackdown on the occupied West Bank, where the Israeli military has been carrying out near-nightly raids. At least 125 Palestinians have been killed in the West Bank so far this year, including dozens of children. Meanwhile, Amnesty International is calling on the International Criminal Court to investigate Israel for committing possible war crimes in Gaza during its deadly assault in August. We go now to Jan Eglund. He is secretary general of the Norwegian Refugee Council, joining us from Jerusalem. Jan, you've just returned from Gaza. Can you talk about the conclusion of your trip in both the occupied in the occupied territories in West Bank and Gaza? Yeah, I've been back now to uh, Israel, the West Bank and Gaza, where I have traveled for 45 years. And I must see, say it's, it's one of the bleakest visits I've had, in, in part because there is no peace process at all. There is no reconciliation between the two neighbors. And there is more settler violence against Palestinian civilians. There are more house demolitions of Palestinian homes, and there are more of our aid programs, aid projects, aid structures that are being demolished by the occupying power. I don't think people outside of this uh, of this region really understands that, that we have now 55 years of occupation, 15 years on the siege of Gaza. Uh, where Gazans, two million of them, half of them young people, feel they are living in an open-air prison. They cannot leave. They cannot enter at will. Uh, they have no uh, real livelihoods prospects if they are young, etc., etc. So hopelessness is what you feel, at the same time as there is also more and more violence. And Jan Eglin, I wanted to ask you specifically about the demolitions you mentioned. Uh, there have been 700 structures uh, demolished by the Israeli authorities just since January of this year, in the past uh, 10 months, uh, even though uh, there is a continued a worldwide condemnation of Israel's uh, uh, attempt to seize more and more land uh, of the uh, Palestinians, but yet Israel has no, surfaced no consequences from its continued flouting of that condemnation. You're absolutely right. Hundreds and hundreds of structures are houses. These are homes, really, are, are, are leveled. Uh, many of them were built by Norwegian, Swedish, German, uh, British aid money for very vulnerable people, Bedouins and, 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 and single mother held households, etc. What the occupying power says is that they are just doing city planning, they're just doing city restructuring and so on. In effect, what you see is that there are more and more settlements, illegal settlements, which means that in violation of international law, you transfer your own population to colonize uh, other land, and the, uh, the population that lived there is being transferred. Today, I met with Fatima, 70 years old. She is, having, is, is here in East, occupied East Jerusalem. She's been living in the same house since she was born. Uh, her, her father uh, started to rent it in 1948 from the Jordanians. Today, in her backyard, there is a tent set up by the extremist right-wing politician called Itamar Ben-Gavir. He is the one who will be elected today on a potentially very large profile of extremist rightist parties under the rubric uh, uh, religious Zionism. He brings in settler youth from the set illegal settlements on the West Bank. And I saw numerous films from footage from, from cameras of these settlers beating up uh, Palestinians. They hurt this Fatima, 70-year-old. She was bleeding. Her, her two sons came to rescue her. And not, and not the, 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 the mafia 
the, the, the violent uh, settler youth were not arrested. Her sons were arrested because she, they were defending Fatima in her own, her own uh, house. You, you can't make up this kind of an injustice that is before our eyes here in occupied lands. And you mentioned uh, the conditions in Gaza. For those people who are not familiar uh, with the life for the two million inhabitants of Gaza, could you talk about uh, some of the worst atrocities occurring there? Well, the, the, uh, Gaza, of course, is, is not a place where there are Israeli soldiers anymore. They were withdrawn. But Gaza is under siege. They, the, the border is closed, shut, and you have to go through in enormous kinds of, of, of barriers, uh, checkpoints, et cetera, controlled by Israel to be able to enter. There, is a, there are two, one from Egypt, one from Israel, uh, uh, entry points, and there is a, another one where uh, trucks can come and, and go. Those uh, places are often shut down. That's why we say there is a siege. The fishermen, uh, of course, there is a, 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 a great dependency on aid now in Gaza. So people try to feed themselves by being fishermen. They've been doing that for thousands of years. They can go three miles into the ocean. If they go further, the fishermen, Israeli Navy would be arresting them or, or, or even sinking their boat. They cannot go by air to this, uh, to this area because Israel is controlling the air uh, completely. This is siege. This is an open-air prison. Gaza, two million inhabitants, is two-thirds of the municipality of my hometown of Oslo in Norway. So, Jan Eglund, um, in this year, 120 Palestinians have been killed so far, making it the deadliest year since 2015. Uh, for the first two weeks of October alone, six Palestinian children killed, uh, bringing the death toll of children, those under the age of 18, to 28 this year. Um, can you talk about whether you see this changing uh, with this election that's about to happen, but most importantly, how this will end? What is the Norwegian Refugee Council calling for? Well, I mean, it may change to the worse by the election today, because the parties that are, are, are likely to make big progress are all parties who are against reconciliation with their own neighbors, the Palestinians, against a peace process and in favor of, of illegal settlements, colonization of, 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 of occupied land and, and the displacement of Palestinian families from their ancestral land. So I think it, it could get worse, but by not giving up, I met with the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the group of uh, European uh, consul generals and ambassadors here in Jerusalem today. I think there is in, in, in Europe a great support for helping Palestinians in their hour of greatest need. On the Palestinian side, the political leadership are split. They are incoherent. There is a big divide between the West Bank and where help held by the Palestinian Authority and, and, and Gaza, where it's Hamas and so on. So, of, of course, the Palestinian side is weak. The stronger side is Israel, and there's one force that can really convince Israel to do what is in their interest, namely to make peace with their neighbors, and that's the United States. But the United States is nowhere to be seen as a political force for a peace process. When President Biden met with the Israeli president, uh, Isaac Herzog, at the White House um, last week, um, during public remarks, neither of them mentioned the Palestinians. Yet, Israel receives um, is one of the highest recipients of military aid in the world from the United States, receiving billions of dollars. Your message to President Biden, Jan Eglund, what this means? Well, my message to the Biden administration is perhaps even reinforced by my message to the U.S. Congress. I mean, if you're friends of Israel, I'm a friend of Israel. I, 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 I've known many Palestinian, uh, Israeli prime ministers. I studied at the Hebrew University here, been a friend of Israel for, for in my entire life. If you, the United States, would be a friend of Israel, 
tell them to not undermine their own security by enraging uh, Palestinian youth beyond belief, by humiliating them, grabbing their land, making it possible them for, to have livelihoods in places like Gaza, and, 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 and killing children five times more frequently than, than the total number of fatalities on the Israeli side of all ages, military and civilian. I mean, they, they, you can't make it up, the kind of, of an injustice that is before our eyes here. And that's not in Israel's interest, because they need to live in peace and security with their neighbors. And Jan Eglin, I'd like to uh, broaden the discussion. Uh, the last month, your organization, the Norwegian Refugee Council, was awarded the Hilton Humanitarian Prize, which is considered the world's largest uh, annual pro award for a nonprofit. Congratulations, first of all. But I wanted to ask you, there are more people on the move, refugees, uh, from their home countries across the world than, than ever before. What, uh, what do you see as some of the areas that are deserving attention when it comes to refugees that are not getting the kind of attention among uh, uh, the media and the citizens of the advanced uh, industrial countries? Yeah, indeed, we have broken that ceiling that I didn't believe we would break, I hope we would never break in my lifetime, which is well over 100 million people now displaced by violence and conflict in the world. You go back 10 years and it was 45 million. Now it's 110 million. The Ukraine war alone has displaced 14 million people, half of them refugees in the rest of Europe, half of them uh, basically displaced within Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine is a horrific war. I'm going there on my third visit this year now, uh, uh, after, after this. Of course, Ukraine is getting a lot of attention and is also getting a lot of our assistance and, 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 and there are resources going there. In the shadow of that war, it got worse in Gaza and the West Bank, where I am now. It got much worse on the Horn of Africa, Somalia, where we will have a famine. We haven't had a famine now for decades. We'll probably have an epic biblical famine there. It's got worse in, in Syria, on both sides of the front lines, in Yemen, on both sides of the front lines, in the, in the Congo, etc. So I'm nervous, really, uh, for, 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 for the world turning inwards, looking, becoming more, more uh, U.S. is becoming more polarized, more inward looking, more nationalistic. Uh, so are so many European countries. And we are, in a way, we, the Norwegian Refugee Council and all of the other colleagues, left often a little bit alone in the front lines where there are more people in need than ever before. 